Okay, what I want to talk to you uh, today about is some of the top 10 things you need to really consider when you're focusing on a exercise program. And the first one I want to talk to you today about is uh, varying your intensity. Now you can control your intensity. How do you control your intensity? By load or the amount of resistance that you're using in a particular exercise, your tempo or the speed of exercise. So for instance, you can be very dynamic, very explosive, or you can go very controlled, very slow. So when we're looking at variables, tempo is number two. Number three is range of motion, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate each of these variables so you get an idea of how you, in fact, when you're exercising, can increase your intensity. Okay, one of the things that I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate is just uh, when you're talking about like a GAVA squat, how we can increase intensity, is just range of motion. A lot of times when you see people, especially when they first start out, if they lack a range of motion in a particular movement pattern such as a squat, what they're gonna do is they might squat down to about here and this is all they can get. Now, one of the reasons why you're limited in your intensity is because you're only using so much musculature. If I squat down here, right, and then I come up, it's a very different metabolically, and it's very different in terms of how much musculature you're recruiting, your nervous system, everything, if you're really squatting down here. You're getting a lot more abs, you're getting a lot more glutes, you have so many more muscles that are neutralizing and stabilizing to keep you in this position. So when I come up here, very different than if I come up and I just do this, okay? So in terms of variables and intensity, range of motion is a real critical one. All right, another variable obviously is load, um, the amount of resistance that I'm handling with a particular exercise. So for instance, if I'm gonna do, let's say I'm gonna do just a, a shoulder press and I've got 45, create a lot of tension. Now, how do I make this harder? I can slow it down so I can decrease the tempo a little bit, especially on this, e, uh, on this lowering or eccentric phase. If I do this compared to this, very different in terms of variables, very different in terms of intensity, okay? So, I've got 45 pounds here. Now, if I take 55 or 60 pounds, increasing the load, that's gonna make it more intense. It's gonna make it more intense on my muscular system, but it also makes it more metabolically demanding. So, one of the things is, in terms of variables, if we're increasing the intensity, we could have the exact same range of motion, but increase our load, and that intensity goes up significantly. Uh, the same thing can be said for range of motion. I can use the exact same load as the person next to me, but increase the range of motion and that variable goes up, that intensity goes up. So remember, you've got your load and you've got your, your rate of speed. So, in range of motion. The next variable I'm gonna show you is, with a rate of speed, I'm gonna show you how to slow things down and how that can make things even more intense with a co-contraction lunge. All right, even though I showed uh, in the kettlebell how you can decrease your speed to make it more intense, I'm gonna show you uh, a really challenging exercise if you slow your tempo, and it's a co-contraction lunge. With a co-contraction lunge, we're in a lunge position, nice tall spine, braced abs. My right hand is on, gonna be on my vastus medialis, or the inside portion of my quadricep, inside portion of that thigh. Rear hand is gonna be on the upper glute. So what I wanna do is I wanna feel for tension in this muscle. And I always wanna keep tension in the muscle. So for instance, right now, my knee is down on my opposite side. I have no tension in the musculature. If I lift this up one inch, I immediately have tension in the musculature, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna slow my tempo down to an eight count. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go concentricate eccentric eight. So this is what it would look like. Tall spine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I still have tension here. If I come up here, there's no tension. I lose that tension. So what I wanna do is maintain tension with a very slow tempo, okay? 
So I can go slow but lose my tension down here, I lose my intensity in the exercise. So it's not just the variable of the speed, it's that you're keeping tension on the muscle, okay? So what I'm doing is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still tension, come down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still tension, pause, one, two, and up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is a real screamer, okay? Especially if your biomechanics are sound, your isotension, you create a lot of isotension in the musculature. Always keep in tension on that muscle. And then what you wanna do is really control your speed. Up uh, an eight count, down an eight count. It's very, very challenging. And it's one of those exercises that the slower you go, the more challenging it can be. So that's one of the things we, we need to be able to differentiate is when we can be powerful, when we need to go a little bit more dynamic, a little bit faster, and when we can slow things down, get better control, more isotension with the musculature. So think about that when you're exercising, all those different variables, and how you can control your intensity. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna demonstrate how we can affect intensity with uh, the variable of tempo. I'm gonna be really powerful, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go super slow, and you can see the difference. So if I'm gonna do a chest press, and I'm gonna be powerful with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go slow on the concentric, and then what I'm gonna do is pop it back on the eccentric, okay? Pop it back, pop it back, pop it back, okay? So I can actually be very powerful, and you can see the movement is very controlled, even though it's rapid, it's still very controlled. I'm controlling it with the musculature, especially my posterior musculature back here, okay? Now, if I want to make it more intense, slowing the speed down, I don't want to think about just going slow with the movement. What I want to think about is how can I create as much tension throughout my body? How can I create as much isotension? So right here, I have my chest out, my shoulders back. I'm gripping the band here. Coming back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one rep. I'm, this is about toasted. Holy smokes, I gotta get in shape. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm not just going slow like this. There's no intensity there. But if I'm really contracting that musculature, and I'm going slow. Now, I'm going slow, but I'm going slow with some intensity. See the difference? Max tension, slow, slow, slow. Very little tension, slow, slow, okay? So pay attention to when you're integrating various tempos. If you're gonna be very dynamic, very powerful, very explosive, Make sure you're sound with your functional mechanics. If you're gonna go super slow, create more isotension in the muscle, and that's really gonna increase the intensity.